Welcome to the summit, Peace Beyond Understanding. And I can now introduce you to Gilbert Schultz. Hi, Gilbert. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and you're <laughs> Gilbert, and then you're also an author. So, and as I, I dare to say you're a non-duality speaker. So, but I know all these, uh, all these different labels are, are not it, but... Mm. I have read a couple of your books, and one of them is Self-Illumination, and Self-Aware is another one I've read, both very beautiful books uh, pointing to our true nature, or our nature, who we are, and uh, you have Self-Aware right there, you can show. Yep, it's the only copy I've got. I've never read it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I guess you don't need to. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and I must say, those pointers are amazing. Because when I was reading them, it was like, ah, yes, it's so clear. And your message is that there is this knowing, the seeing, the being is, is all that that we are really and well it, it, it's spontaneous you know the seeing is spontaneous and and the thing is what i'm pointing at is that um life is spontaneous you know nobody can tell you where life came from because it's spontaneous it's only this immediacy you know if your heart stops beating boom you're out of the picture so it's a, it's this immediacy. So what's necessary is to recognize or recognize that the seeing is happening spontaneously. When you open your eyes in the morning, the seeing is there. You don't have to go and throw a switch and start pedaling on some generator to get the seeing happening. It's happening. It's spontaneous. It's an aspect of consciousness or awareness or life itself and it's intelligent you know it, it is uh it's incredibly intelligent it's it's probably more intelligent than anything else um but it's not a thing so what i'm pointing at is to acknowledge that this seeing is happening spontaneously and that you are not i'm not doing it you know this person that i think i am is not actually doing the seeing it's just spontaneously happening and from a point of view of a so-called separate entity to recognize that that's incredibly humbling because you know i'm not doing it the same with the knowing the knowing or the cognition is an activity of um, cognition or an activity of knowing that is happening spontaneously you are not doing it Recognizing that is humbling for the believed in entity. And then, you know, belief is never the actual, the belief is never true. No belief is ever true. Because if it was true, it wouldn't be called a belief. You know, the definition, definition of a belief is that which is accepted as an alleged fact without any positive knowledge or proof. And we live in, you know, generally speaking, we live in a society and, or a world where belief is held up as something sacred. You know, but it's not true. No belief is ever true. And, and in, in a social situation, it's very impolite to challenge somebody's beliefs. You know, we, we need to respect other people's beliefs. beliefs. You know, people can believe whatever they want um it's none of my business but everyone has the right to investigate their own beliefs because it's the erroneous beliefs of being a separate entity living in a world of lots of other separate entities um believing that they're separate is is really the problem there is no separation there the whole which is what i'm pointing at has never been divided you know it's it's never 
it's the universe is not composed it's not made up of parts it's one integral integral whole and even the physical universe is only the surface you know when you look at objects you see the surface of them with the light reflecting off them you look at an orange and you see the the skin and the color you can't see the whole orange because inside of the orange is invisible and you know this is what we're up against um generally speaking people skim across the surface of the mind and accept the appearance of things and the labels and only a few people sort of delve in you know what is my true nature you know and that can be scary you know because it it immediately challenges the belief structure and that's where I feel safe. I feel safe in my beliefs and you can't challenge my beliefs. Only I can do that, but I don't want to do that because my whole identity is woven into this ball of erroneous concepts about who I am. And therefore I suffer. I suffer or the believed in entity suffers because the, the things it clings on to are not true. So the natural state, which is, you could say that's our true nature, is wordless and silent. So in, in, in a way, whatever we say about it, whatever we say about the true nature or looking for the true nature, any description of it is not true. And therefore the revelation that the so-called individual experiences is the collapse of the belief system and the revelation of just being which is immediate which is life you know life is intelligence it's energy everything is energy and there's no right or wrong you know what's appearing is the is an incredible display of consciousness ever fresh and ever new it it's it's actually not changing but in the appearance it's constantly changing so when the seeker which is a changing set of beliefs and input input and whatever when it goes searching for the true self all it's doing is finding change it's constant change and it's it's living in hope of finding a permanent uh, state you know and and that's the trap because there is no such thing as an enlightened being there's no difference between an, a so-called enlightened being and an ordinary everyday being the same being and it's the discrimination that causes the problem and the suffering so the natural state is wordless and silent so how can i recognize that well you don't really have to because it is the cognizing it's it doesn't need to be recognized because it is the cognizing the actuality but in the appearance of things it needs to be recognized and it, the recognition is what dissolves the er erroneous beliefs of being a separate entity. So with a continued um, investigation of who I am, what I am, what's really going on, delving into, you know, the, the, um, the essence of it, um, the so-called intellect, has to play a part in that but the revelation is that the intellect doesn't really know anything it's just a bundle of a cluster of ideas and concepts and things but in the appearance of things it has to be willing to investigate what am i you know raman mahashi one of his pointers was the question who am i and people spend decades asking this question who am I? And they miss the answer, which is the silence. You know, and if you look at the, 
the history of Ramana Maharshi, he was silent for most of the time. He just sat there in, and an ashram formed around, around him and people came. They were drawn to him for, you know, for whatever reason, or no reason really, but it, it, um, others were drawn to him because of they somehow they recognized something uh, maybe in the atmosphere or maybe in, in him himself, you know. Um, and there are some very good um, books around on things that he did say, say. And one of the things he said, which very few people um, quote, uh, not many, I've never heard an, a, a so-called spiritual teacher um, use the quote. Um, and it, it, what he says, he says, um, I'll try and remember it word for word. Um, he says, you are the ultimate being. Then you take yourself to be a limited creature. See, through our beliefs in all of these concepts and whatever, we take ourselves to be limited. Then he says, then you create sadhanas, which is methods and practices. You create the sadhanas in order to overcome these non-existing limitations. So how can they do that? How can they overcome something that's non-existent? How can some, you know, these are my words now, how can somebody escape from a prison that they're not in? Yeah. So, you know, and every effort that we make with these methods and practices actually keep the prison cage in place. Yeah. It's de devastating. Yeah. So the natural state is wordless and silent. That's the direction to go in. And generally speaking, people don't like silence. They like to, you know, we all know, know somebody who's uh, they non-stop talking and uh, they just talk, 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 and you can't get a word in edgewise. You know, it's coming from a fear. They're filling that silence with their, you know, their noise um, because of insecurity or whatever. Um, and sometimes it's very hard to help those people because they don't give you a chance. Um, but this is the direction, this, the, the natural state whatever you want to call it, the, the true self, the essence of being is silent and wordless because words were, they came, you know, when you were a baby, a little baby, there's just being an instinct. We don't have any words. The words come much later, two, two and a half years, three years, the words are introduced. And then we construct these conceptual um, limitations from language, which, and language is not a, an exact science. Language is interpreted by each individual according to their understanding of the words that are being used. And, and it's, it's not exact, you know, like that's why there's so much uh, conflict and be, when people argue and things, they may be arguing about exactly the same thing, um, and agreeing, and yet in by misinterpretation, they're in a disagreement. Yeah, and this is suffering. Yeah, yeah, I know it works. It can be very confusing because I also know, for example, in non-duality, there's like the word awareness, there's consciousness, there's the essence of being, there's true nature, there's nothing, nothing being <laughs> everything, and you know, it's like oh, okay, there's no awareness, but there's nothing, or there's, and it's like, wait, aren't we talking about the same, but just different words, and, you know, of God? Yeah, 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 and that, that's a basic principle, see, in the cosmology, I think in the Hindu cosmology, it says, um, the oneness uh, becomes many, and therefore, ignorance comes about something like that you know ignorance is the belief in the many you know 
and people say we are all one but the word we is multiplicity it's not singular we is is a collection so we are not one one is is what we are but there's no division so it you know the thing is that the mind cannot divide the wholeness but it appears to and it appears to divide the wholeness of existence through the use of words and an imposed meaning through those on those words which is uh, particular to the individual and then it's believed uh, but in truth the mind cannot divide anything except itself and it divides itself through words and um, erroneous beliefs and a, a, a kind of personal meaning that is imposed upon the words yeah yeah and so it's like a mind maze that you mentioned in your book self-aware is the mind maze kind of yeah yeah it's, well they call it maya in, in in the hindu maya is the great the great illusion mm. and it has to be that way and lord krishna said no one can penetrate my world bewitching maya no one not someone can and somebody can't no one can penetrate my world bewitching my maya that's because there is no one that can penetrate it you know there's no separate it's the wholeness and the wholeness is already complete and all inclusive yeah. it's all inclusive so there's nothing right or wrong but we get on this path of right and wrong and then we do all these things trying to heal or put pull together duality duality is not going to suddenly become one duality is duality it is the light and the dark it is the um the incredible diversity of this amazing uh display of consciousness with all its contrasts and beauty you, you look at anything plants or trees look at the bark on a tree um it's the contrast and the colors and the, and, and the textures it's it's beautiful yeah yeah it is beautiful and it's it's so fully alive and and it's in movement you could say it's energy and and that is all stillness too or the consciousness the, the presence the wordless yes yeah yeah well. yeah it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah so in effect you know like this is a book right yeah and inside the book there are words which are symbols mm -hmm. you know if it was written in a different language that i don't know it would i would see the symbols and i go wow what do they mean uh but because it's in english i instantly the words are recognized but actually there's nothing in the book it's just ink on paper yeah. Yeah. This, this, you know the glorification of authors and gurus and teachers it's all nonsense there's nothing in the words you know the words are pointers and the, the only value a pointer has is in the recognition of what the pointer is pointing at so in effect the messenger is not important people worship the messenger you know like they, they they go and kiss the feet of the guru or whatever and they're worshiping the messenger and they're missing the message completely missing the message and it's you know it's not the thing is when you're a child you learn a language and we do that by imitation through you know, we learn to make the sounds of the words through the mother we listen we hear hearing the mother's voice and and the father and the family and whatever and we learn to um, imitate these sounds and you know so imitations has its place but it's not the reality and you know the thing is you can't teach what you don't know no one can teach what they don't know 
And actually, non-duality is not a teaching. It's not a teaching. It's a revelation of your true nature, which is the whole. Yeah. It's pointing to that, like, and it's obvious, right? Like the, because wakefulness is. Yeah, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect in everyone, in every being I've ever met or come across. The wakefulness is there and it's perfect. It's not recognized because the, the ideas and the beliefs which cause the suffering have not been investigated. Yeah. That's all. That's all. You know. So you can respect the wakefulness in in all creatures, and and be one with it. Um, and even your enemy. You know. I think Krishna again. He said, "I am even the glint of light in your enemy's eye." Yeah. You know. It's a beautiful thing. It's like. And I think in the uh, Mahabharata, there's a scene at the end where one of the warriors is asked to um, go and kiss his arch enemy up in heaven. And he says, no way, I'm not going to do that. I'd rather be in hell, you know. And th this is what we do, you know. Yes. We, it, we, it, the whole is all inclusive. But we take ourselves to be separate and then we like this and we don't like that. And I want to stay away from that, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just the mind the whole time having ideas about things and judging everything and all that and 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 that's all made up by the mind well it, it's spontaneous it's spon it's actually there's nothing wrong with it it's spontaneously appearing there's nothing wrong with it but you know a thought comes up maybe i hate that person right and then another thought comes up, oh, I shouldn't have that thought. You know, I'm a spiritual person. I shouldn't, I shouldn't hate anyone, you know. So there's conflict between these two reference points. And that's, that's all it is, you know. It, we have these reference points that we think are important or not important. And uh, the conflict or the confusion in the so-called mind, which you can't find, um, is a conflict between reference points that can't merge. They, they're kept apart um, by preferences or uh, erroneous beliefs. So it's like when you have an insight into something, there's a sort of a dissolving of something and there's a sense of relief and a revelation. Yeah, you, you can know? see it's just thoughts. It was just... Yeah. That's all there is to that. And yeah, it's, it, it's just that we, we hang on to the thoughts and the beliefs. And is that true? Do, you know, I mean, that's, that's another story that we tell ourselves. Right. We hang, we hang on to something. Yeah. Investigate that. You know, one of my pointers that came up recently is uh, observe the disappearance of a thought. Yeah. What happens? The mind empties, and there's a there's a clarity there. Yeah, and that's that's what needs to be recognised. So it's just the knowing. The you could say the naked knowing. Yeah, there's no knower. You know, once you there's no seer, there's no knower, there's no doer. You know that actually you know so much conflict in this world of ours is apparently due to the fact that everyone thinks they are a doer and in that belief they're creating all sorts of problems for themselves and they suffer but if you realize that you're not the doer that everything is spontaneously happening there's no blame the blame game is massive you know, massive suffering comes from the blame game. And it starts when you're a child in school, you know, me, 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 me. And, you, and you take it all the way to the top in world politics. You know, there's a blame game going on. Yeah. It's all nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, because whatever 
the mind comes up with uh, it's it's always a description of something it's not the real thing and that's right yeah the real thing is just this right this being here mm. now and yeah there's not there's nothing wrong with it there's nothing right with it there's nothing you can say about it because yeah. it's wordless and silent mm -hmm. yeah wordless and silent right and mm. Yet it holds everything that's noisy and foreign. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, if you think if you think about the loudest sound that's ever happened on this planet, you know you can imagine. You know, we've, we've, we 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 know about um, uh, volcanoes and, and earthquakes. Earthquakes don't make a lot of sound, but you know you can imagine some huge explosion that happened on this planet. Um, that sound, the loudest sound, diminished and disappeared into the silence. The silence swallowed up the sound, and the silence is swallowing up all sounds constantly. And the sound comes out of the silence and goes back into the silence. Yeah. And yeah, so if you follow this, the disappearance of, a, say, a bell ringing, or a thought dissipating, it takes you back to that silence. Not that you ever, ever left it, but it, it becomes more uh, um, obvious, but it's always obvious. So, you know, that's the thing about clarity. People think that they, they, they get more clarity, you know, um, and they're looking for more clarity and they're accumulating more clarity it's nonsense, you know. Clarity is. It's it's the elimination of that which we believe in that's confusing. The that as you eliminate those things through investigation, the clarity reveals itself naturally because it's always there. Yeah. The natural state is always there. Yeah. Does that make sense? It, it, it completely makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful too because it's like yes i'm already it i'm already what i'm looking for so yeah i can never lose it it's like oh yes you. yeah that's it you know and the thing is you know you, um we, we might get very excited in realizing that and then we want, might want to share it with others you know and uh and they it's like they're like ooh, you know it's it the thing is you cannot transmit understanding understanding is like a a seed in all of us and it can germinate and it can grow for a lot of people it doesn't 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 even germinate um this is a concept i'm i'm using but um it has some meaning you know and this understanding What's the name of the summit again? It's uh, beyond understanding peace. Beyond done. Yeah, yeah. Like so wisdom or so, it, like, yeah, it's beyond even understanding. Yeah, like a yeah. Clear, pure understanding. In other yeah, words. yeah. So in my analogy, the, the the seed of understanding germinates and grows, and then it it um, reaches a point where everything is understood and then there's the beyond the understanding which is what the understanding is floating in right and that's the peace and the thing about you know peace is just a word for it it's the silent wordless reality which is actually there here before the seed germinates and grows you know so that's just an appearance of a growth of understanding mm -hmm. and the, the other side is, of that is that the erroneous beliefs diminish and then they disappear yeah yeah and it's it's all just natural and that, that's uh, the beautiful thing too that we don't have to do anything you know it's <laughs> and, yeah yeah. All you do, all you do, all the things that you think you're doing are just 
interference patterns. Mm. It's the ego, you know. Yeah. I'm enlightened. I'm enlightened. You know, you're not enlightened. Blah 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 blah. You know, follow me. I'll take you to the truth. It's yeah. all nonsense. Yeah, and and it's it's again just right yeah yeah it's all beliefs and and the definition of a belief is the acceptance of an alleged fact without any knowledge or proof you know if if you really want to investigate this just sit quietly sometime and and then call up your beliefs you know, what's your favorite belief the one that you you really like you know and investigate it go into it see wh whether it's actually based on any facts or any true knowledge and you find no it's just a bunch of ideas images and memories and then you're released from that belief you don't have to protect that belief anymore yeah. and the me the me the self-image is the belief that all the other beliefs hang off so when you see that the me is a fiction there's a tremendous relief because all of the guilt and all of the shame and all of the suffering all hangs off that belief in being a separate entity yeah yeah and and it's not even there that separate entity yeah yeah it's not there yeah it's it's like a rainbow right yeah and where does where does a rainbow begin or end yeah 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 wow yeah Wait, this is beautiful i'm so glad gilbert yeah, that you took your time and you could uh, illuminate this. well it's self-illumination yeah you know it's not about me you know it's not about me illuminating others or or you know all i can do is point and there are lots of you know pointers around and there are lots of teachers that are pointing um, and they're all pointing at the same thing in fact all conversations anywhere on this planet are about this we're all pointing at the same thing in our own unique way whether it's understood or or um, recognized is is uh, you know it's a mystery and who cares yeah because uh, there's no person here really to care you know like it's just life happening right it's just yeah it's spontaneous uh, yeah. you know life is yeah life is spontaneous life itself is spontaneous nobody can tell you where life came from no you know science is looking for the big bang blah blah they're all theories they're all models and 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 the model of something is not the thing right you know and, and there's a i think the phrase is model dependent realism mm. you know and science is a, is interesting you know science makes all these discoveries and then they have to invent new words mm. to explain something they've discovered so that's significant you know because the words don't exist until we invent them and put them onto things you know like the word apple you can't eat the word apple <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway all good but it is interesting yeah the whole meaning onto everything and it is yeah there yeah. it's the story and yeah. yeah 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 it's uh yeah Psych what i say is psychological suffering is unnecessary yeah yeah it's all and direct knowing and nothing can describe that nothing can replace that that's right but you know psychological suffering is unnecessary yeah. and who would argue with that i would like to meet somebody who would argue in the favor of psychological suffering nobody would argue in in favor of psychological suffering why would they yeah no. so it's unnecessary yeah yeah it's it's better to just uh, be in happiness or at ease with life or yeah 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 and that will have an on flowing effect on to others so to speak mm. you know, being in the company of somebody who's not um 
pushing some religion or pushing some teaching or or pushing you know some something they're trying to sell you you know being in the company of somebody who's just being mm. is 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 beautiful it's like yeah yeah i want some of that yeah well you you've already got it <laughs> <laughs> You are it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gilbert. How, how can people get in touch with you? What's your website? My website is www.seeing-knowing.com. Yes. And my two books are Self-Aware and Self-Illumination. And they're available on Amazon. Yeah. And you have any events or anything you offer? It will be on your website too. Yeah, I don't. I don't get into events, um, but um, I've I've done a few. I did the Nothing Conference a while ago. Um, but yeah, I'm not. I'm an ordinary guy. I, I just want to have an ordinary life. You know, I don't want to be. You know, have all these seekers knocking on my door and you know hassling me. <laughs> But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I know. But people can get in touch with you through your website, right? Yeah, yeah, and some people do. And and uh, some people write and say, I've been reading your book and my mind keeps stopping. And I write back and say, well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, lovely to meet you. Yeah, thank you so much, Gilbert. I appreciate it. I appreciate taking your time and uh, thank you for participating.